Welcome back everybody to another Excel VBA tutorial. Uh, in this video, we're gonna wrap up our series with the chart objects. So in our previous videos that were done a while back, we talked about how to create a chart with VBA. And then we also saw, saw how to format some of the different components of it. So things like the axes, the series, and, and things along that na nature. We saw how to change the series colors, add some uh, legends. We can add, uh, what is it? I think they're leader marks, is that what you call them? I think it's leader marks. But anyway, it's the little data labels and then the lines to the actual data label itself. Um, in this video, we're gonna be now be working with the chart area object. Um, it's kind of broad, but basically, this is kind of all really your chart area object. So um, it's kind of the chart itself, but it's its own little property within inside the chart object. And so in order to kind of do any of the formatting, you're not really gonna be working with that chart property, you're gonna be working more with the chart area property. So um, does confuse people at first, but usually once you see it in a couple lines of code, not too bad. All right, that being said, let's jump into VBA. Okay, so I already have a subroutine already uh, printed out. It's just called work with chart area. Um, once you've done that, we'll just get kind of started. So the first thing we're gonna do is declare our variables. And the first one we're gonna do is gonna be chart. And this is gonna be a chart object. The next one is gonna be something called a chart axes. And this will be an individual axis object. There are axes and then there's an individual axis. So axes are all the axes on a particular chart. And then an axis is simply one of the objects from that axes collection. So a uh, little confusing at first, but once you kind of think about it, it makes sense. Okay, so once we've done that, we can create a reference to our chart. So create a reference to our chart. Very straightforward. We're gonna just set our chart object equal to our active sheet. We're gonna go into our chart objects collection. We'll use the index method and we'll grab the first chart that exists on our sheet. There's only one, so our index can only be one. And then once we've done that, let's just do a little bit of formatting. So maybe we wanna add some 3D effects to our chart area. So we'll add some 3D effects to our chart area. And so we'll call our chart object. We'll go in to our chart property, into the chart area property. We're gonna call format. And then we're gonna do 3D. And then we're gonna say bevel top type. So there's different ones that you can set. Obviously it's different parts of the chart. And then once you've selected the part that you wanna make 3D, you got angle, circle, convex. Um, I usually just do circle. Again, you kind of play around with it. You just have to kind of understand really what is the formatting that you're trying to do. And then once you've done that, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward. So if I run this, you can see it kind of made it that 3D effect that we were expecting. So I think that's kind of, definitely kind of neat if you need that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this a little bit more, just like that. So that way I don't have to keep switching back and forth. Okay, so another thing that you can do is you can chop, copy the chart area. We've seen this done plenty of times, but it's very straightforward. So we'll copy the chart area. Uh, we'll do chart dot chart and then chart area and then we can do copy. And then this will copy it to our clipboard. So it selects it and then it copies it. Something I'm gonna do right here just to see if I can do it. And then we'll do a chart area object. This way I don't have to kind of keep writing this. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set uh, the chart area equal to my chart. I'm gonna go into the chart property and then I'm gonna do the chart area. So um, this is just create a reference to the chart area. It's an object, but when you call the property returns the object again, just to make things more confusing for you. That's all they wanna do. No, it's not too bad. It just takes a little bit to kind of understand what they're doing. Um, this way it's like, I don't have to keep writing chart and chart property and then chart area. Um, I can kind of make everything a little bit more concise. Already, see, good to go. All right, so now that we've done that, um, we've seen that we can copy it. Certain things you can also do too is you can clear formats, you can clear content. Um, I'm not actually gonna run it because I don't wanna delete my chart, but this is how it would look if you wanna start doing things like clear formats, um, 
content, uh, and then just clear in general. So there's just this clear method. It's very uh, simple. Uh, it, we just go into our chart area. It's clear, well, sorry, not that. It's clear and then chart area. We can do clear contents and then we can do chart um, area, uh, clear formats. So this is how you would clear different components of your wonderful little chart. So obviously formats removes your formats. Um, this one removes your content. So things like the actual values and stuff like that. And then clear removes both. So it's gonna just basically clear everything from that chart. Again, I'm not gonna run it because I don't wanna delete my chart, but just keep in mind their methods. They're very straightforward. This is kind of how you would do it. Okay, so let's add a shadow to our particular chart. I wanna add a shadow. So we're gonna add a shadow and do some additional formatting. So you can actually take that shadow and make it all fancy and pretty. So we'll do say with chart area uh, format. And then we're gonna do the shadow property. I'm gonna do an end with. And usually with formatting, it makes sense to use a with statement because if you wanna apply multiple formatting properties to the same object, this is how you do it, use the with statement. First thing is we wanna make sure it's visible. So we actually wanna make sure we can see our shadow because right now you don't see it. And then once we've done that, we can always choose a, not a size, but a style. And then we have inner shadow, mixed, and then outer shadow. I want mine to be outer, so kind of on the outside. Inner is obviously inside, and then mixed is kind of like both of them at the same time. You can set a transparency equal, and then it's just a percentage, so I do like 40%. And then you can also change, uh, sorry, choose a color. Um, I'm gonna do an RGB blue, at least I believe if I remember correctly, this is blue. It's 36, 60, and then 252. So when I do this, it should add a shadow to it and then do some cool formatting. Cool, there you go. So now you've added a shadow to your wonderful little chart. Um, kind of neat, you know, if you want to think of it like that. I like the blue shadows. I think it makes it look nice. Some people would disagree. Okay, so let's add some rounded corners to our chart. So we'll add some rounded corners. Uh, again, we're gonna go into our chart area object. We're gonna call the rounded corners property and we're just gonna set that equal to true. It's as simple as that. And so now it selected it and you can see it now has rounded corners. So that's kind of nice. Uh, I'm gonna put this down a little bit so I don't have to keep scrolling. Uh, you can also select the chart area. So select the chart area, it's, you know, you probably can guess it's pretty intuitive. Um, we're just gonna go and go to the select method. And so this would select the chart area, which is basically selecting the chart itself. <laughs> um, that's the thing, I think that's what confuses people the most. It's like chart area just seems to be the chart. It is, but it isn't, at least from the VBA object model itself. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's work with one of our axes. And so maybe I want to change my axes right down here. So my values axes. I already declared my variable up here. So I'm just going to set a reference to it. So set the chart axis. And so I'm going to say set chart axis. I'm pretty sure that I spelled it right. Perfect. And we're going to go into our chart. We're going to go into our chart property. And then we're going to go to our axes. Uh, it takes two different uh, parameters. First one is a type. Uh, in this case, I want the value uh, axes, and then I want the group. So what group am I working with? You can have a secondary or a primary. I want my primary axes. So I'm going to work with my values axes. What am I doing? Okay, and so some things I might want to do is I might want to change my major and minor units. So we'll say change the major and minor unit. That just kind of basically determines how many ticks you have in between. Uh, so we'll say chart axes. We'll go into our major unit and we'll set that equal to a thousand. I like less uh, ticks if possible, but not too few. And then we'll do the minor unit equal to, I don't know, we'll do 400, something like that. So if I run that, you can see it kind of removed some of it. And so now it's a little bit cleaner. I think that's cleaner personally. You can change your scale. So you can have a linear scale or a logarithmic, 
logarithmic scale. That is a tongue twister for me. Change the scale type of our axes. So again, go into that chart axis object, and then there's something called scale type, and then you have an option between linear and logarithmic. Uh, by default is on linear, but you can change it to the alternative. And then what you'll notice is now it starts at one, 1,000, and then it does it at a logarithmic scale if you want it like that. Um, you can also set a tick label spacing. That's the way they describe it. So set the tick label spacing. And so we're gonna take our chart axes, we're gonna go in tick label spacing, and then you can you know, put it like, I don't know, 20. Uh, a valid value is from one to 31,999. No joke, that is the actual range. I don't know why they didn't do 32,000, but again, I trust their judgment. Uh, it kind of hard to tell, but uh, what happened? Maybe if I do 10? Oh, well, that's kind of interesting. That didn't happen to my previous one at work. Hmm. Chart axes, tick label spacing. Hmm. What if I just do one? No? Okay. I'm gonna have to look into that one. I don't know why that is. I'll have it on the final one. Uh, it's weird. That kind of worked at my work computer, so I don't know why it's not working on my personal one. So... Who knows? <laughs> okay, we can also change the tick label position. Uh, again, chart axes, tick label position. You got high, low, next to axes, um, or none. So I'm gonna say low. Again, it's, uh, maybe, let me see if I do that. So that kind of just gets rid of it, but that kind of is town intuitive. Um, I think I had it at low to begin with, but if I put it to high, it puts it up here, lows down here, and then so on. So if you can see high puts it up here, low down here, and then I think there was an, what it was a position next to axes. So that's just kind of puts it right there. Um, you can also uh, change the orientation of your chart. So you know where this little thing here, it's like switch rows and columns. Uh, this is how that would look in VBA. So plot by row or column. And so we'll say chart, chart, plot by. Uh, you can do Excel rows. It switches it. And then you can also do chart, plot by, and then obviously the only other one left is columns, and that's back to our original one. So a nice kind of, and that's actually kind of cool too if you want to make it a little bit more interactive or, you know, something where you're building like a dashboard or something and uh, you want to be able to switch it kind of on command, uh, that would be a nice little way to do it. So I definitely, you know, I think that's definitely cool. Um, you can also change where your, your axes cross. Um, so this is kind of just how it would look, uh, where the axis crosses at. Uh, and so you can say chart, axes, crosses, and then you've got these options, automatic, custom, maximum, you know, different things like that. So you can see if it's at the maximum now, it's, it's, it's switching it a little bit. Uh, you can also do it as such. Oh, sorry, misspelled that. And then it's crosses at equals. I think you can like set this like individual value itself. So it, again, you can. I maybe. I maybe you could even do like negative. If I remember correctly. No, you can't do negative. But you can do maybe if I do like fifty. So yeah. Um, you can kind of start it here. I think it's because there was actually no um, negative value, so it kind of gives a interesting one. But you can see, you can just change where it's crossing at, and you can obviously make it very, very specific. So I could say, hey, it needs to be 600, you know, or it needs to be, you know, 1,000 or something like that. This is kind of how you're doing it. So again, you could even have like a little dynamic uh, 
little like dash thing here, like a scroller, that you can change it and then it will move it along this particular axis. I've seen people do that in the past to kind of, again, make it a little bit more dynamic. So definitely useful stuff. But with that being said, that actually finishes this video. So if you have any questions about working with the chart area, or if you wanna talk about the chart axes, please put them down in the comments below. Um, when I post it to GitHub, I will kind of tell you what happened here. Again, I'm not really sure why that's not working on my personal one, but it worked on my work one. Uh, so I'll have to look into that, but that will be on the GitHub code. So uh, don't worry, it will be coming. And then also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. Uh, channel's been growing very nicely. It's always cool. Um, and then also, if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. So that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. Cool stuff is coming up soon. Uh, the JavaScript API, it's a hot topic, I know. But um, I'm going to start covering that. And we're going to talk about a specific add-in that it's not necessarily replacing VBA, but I've been hearing that supposedly it might be part of Office. Again, just hearing. I'm not really sure if that's the case. But it will allow us to basically code TypeScript and JavaScript that works inside of our Excel application or really just our Office applications in a general sense. So interesting stuff coming uh, down the road. So I think uh, a lot of people are kind of eager to go to that Office API. Stick around. So thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.